Hello friends and welcome to the channel. People that know me in real life know me as Steve. People that know me on this channel know me as Patriot 6. But Steve or Patriot 6, either one will work. Today I'm going to continue this series on the airport I'm building. This will be part four. My plan in part four is to add general aviation ramps to give the taxiways a number and to add a couple of usable heliports. And now since SU-11 has come out, and we have the ability to add start point helipads. I'm also going to add a couple of those. And with that, we'll continue part four. Greetings and welcome to Patriot 6. I make tutorial videos for scenery building or modifications to scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 utilizing SDK. Different people at different levels of skill see these videos. You may be here because you're curious or you may already know the basics of scenery building. It is impossible for me to know who will click on a video. Because of the broad range of folks that view the videos, I include the basics in each video. This and all new videos will be built in chapters. You can find the chapters of the video in the description below. In addition, you can see the chapters on the video timeline if you want to skip the basic chapters. To build scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, you must be in developer's mode. And this is a very simple process and I'll walk through it. First, you go to options. Go to General Options, you go to Developers, On, Apply and Save. Once in Developers mode, you will see a menu appear at the top. I refer to this often as the Developers menu. In addition to being in Developers mode, you must have SDK. And this is a very simple process. You go up to the Developers menu, you find the Help, you tick on Help, and then you tick on SDK Installer Core. And a window will open up and SDK will load in. And from that point, you can decide where you want the SDK. I'm going to tick off of this because I already have it. I put SDK on my C drive and I called the folder MSFS SDK. But you can place SDK where you want to place it. In addition to that, it's always good to go in and get the samples. And from the same help menu, you want to go down to samples. And again, you will download the samples. I'm going to stop it because I already have the samples. And once you download the samples, you can go into your SDK folder that you built. And you can find samples by ticking on the samples folder. And there's all kinds of samples here, but the one most often used is the one called Simple Scenery. Let's talk about the developer camera. The developer camera is something that is vital and something that you will use often. And to get to the developer camera, you go up to the developer menu, tick on camera, and tick on developer camera. Operating the developer camera is a lot like operating the drone camera. So I'll show you the keys that we use to operate the developer camera. If we want to drop, we hit the F key. If we want to rise, we hit the R key. If we want to go left, we use the A key. And if we want to go right, we use the D key. If we want to go forward, we use the W key. And if we want to go in reverse, we use the S key. There's also some numerical keys that you can use. On the number pad, the four key will spin you. And the six key will spin you in the opposite direction. The eight key will tilt your camera up. And the two key 
will tilt your camera down. Occasionally when you're building scenery, your azimuth will get off. So that's very easy to correct by using the 7 key or the 9 key. And then you can correct your azimuth. You can also use the mouse and freely move around. By holding down the left alt key and by using your left mouse button, you're able to move anywhere you want to move. Also, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in or out. Almost always, this is a process I go through. I'll tick on the developer camera. I will drop to the ground using the F key. Then I will use the left Alt key and the left mouse button to make sure I can spin in small areas. That is the fine control of the camera I'm looking for. What I don't want is this. You see what happened there? As soon as I got in and I used my mouse button to move, look how far I am from my aircraft. So again, to the developer camera, drop down with the F key, and with the left Alt key depressed and the left mouse button, make sure you can make minute movements. And now you're good to go and ready to use the developer camera. Let's talk about the tools that we need to build scenery. In most projects, it's very simple. The items which you use to build scenery are typically in your scenery library already. There are exceptions though. If you are bringing a 3D model into the sim, that would be an exception. If you are using the Earth to MSFS tool, that is another exception. And on occasion, you may need a text editor. I will explain the reason for the text editor once I do a video where the text editor is needed. For starters, put a folder on your desktop that you will use as your working scenery folder. I have one here and I will show you what I have in it. All I have in it is a simple scenery folder I downloaded from SDK and I do have a thumbnail. In the simple scenery folders that you download through this version of SDK, a thumbnail is not mandatory because there is a standard thumbnail within the scenery package. However, on all of my projects, I choose to have a thumbnail and it's your choice where you want to go with a standard thumbnail in the scenery folder or if you want your own. If you decide you want to make your own thumbnail, the thumbnail has to be the precise dimensions of this thumbnail I use, 412 by 170 pixels. No other size will work. So if you build your own thumbnail, please keep this rule in mind. To continue, I want to zone into the airport that I've been building, and of course I'm in developer's mode already. And I'll go to the map and find the location. In the location, I'm going to Options and Pause the Simulator and Fly. Once flying, open the developer camera and move over to the location. Up on the Dev Menu Tools, Project Editor. Click on project, open project, and it knows a folder already, but in case yours doesn't, you need to navigate to the scenery folder, bottom XML, and open. And once open, the project will come up in the project editor, and I want to tick on scenery BGL and load an editor. One of the things that I did off of camera was to adjoin all of the taxiways. In every junction point you can see out here, I adjoined the taxiways together. And it's a simple thing to do, and I'll show you quickly how I did this. Here you can see a taxi path, and you can see the taxi points coming from two different directions. But here you will notice it's only one point, and that's because I adjoined it. And to adjoin it, it's real simple. You want to tick on one of the taxi points. 
and then with your left control key down, you tick on another, and you see both are lit up, and then you right click, and merge points. Now, I don't want these two to be merged here, so I performed this task just to show you. So down on the scenery editor, I'm going to undo. And I perform this process that you see here at every junction on every taxiway. So let's go ahead and give the taxiways a number designation. I want this main taxiway here to be A. So I'll tick on one of the paths and then I will right click and I will select linked path. And you can see the linked path highlighted. So over on the properties window, I'm going to give this taxi path the name A as an alpha. And since it stopped here, I'm going to have to add A's along the way. And with the properties up, I'm going to type A. And another A here. And another. I'll continue on till I get this entire path named A. To make it easier, I just selected linked path and I'm going to place an A in the path name down here on the properties. At this time, I'm going to name this taxiway B as in Bravo. So I'm going to go through that process just as I did with A. With A and B completed, let's name these taxiways C and D. Here's two taxi points that are close enough I can merge them. So by clicking on one, holding down the left control key, Selecting the other, right click, merge points. Now just by selecting link path, I can grab this whole thing here. You can't always when you have junctions, but at this point I can and save a little time by naming all of them C. Now I'm going to work on taxiway D as in Delta. On the C side, as I tick on each one of these, it does show C in the properties. And that's what I want. Okay, by selecting this and linked path, it looks like it takes me to here, so I can name all of these D. Continue on. And I'm far enough along here, I can select link path and get all of these points and nodes. And I probably should give this taxi point here a name. And I'll simply name this AB. With the taxi paths named, I'm going to save the scenery. And now I'm going to tick on A. I'm going down to the scenery editor and I'm going to select rendering. And I'm going to show taxi names. And now I'm going to look around and see if anything's cluttered up.
far as I can tell, everything looks fine. Back to rendering and tick off. Let's do a quick package build to make sure we don't get any errors with the taxiway. Of course, on the inspector, I'm going to build package. And I don't see any new errors, so I think we're good to go. It's time now to add some GA parking ramps. And because I have a hard time drawing a straight line, I'm going to insert a rectangle to keep me in line. Up on the objects menu, I'm going from scenery to rectangle and add. And I'm going to use the gizmo and the scale to get the rectangle lined up as I want it to be and the size I want it to be. This is simply to assist me in laying out the GA ramp that they are in a relatively straight line as opposed to zigzagging all over the ramp. I'll use a gizmo to rotate and get this in the place that I want it and size it up. That's probably as good as I'm going to get it. Now in the gizmo I'll just go to scale and scale this up and translate to position. And now I have a straight line across here. I can start adding GA ramps. In order to place ramps on the objects window, I'm going down to taxiway parking. And once I'm there, I can see ramp GA. So I can start adding ramps. And you will notice there's an arrow. I want to rotate with the gizmo so the aircraft is pointing in the direction I want. And now I'm going to add another and rotate and continue on following the same process I did for one. Now with the first roll in place, I'm going to tick on the rectangle and move the rectangle this way and add six more ramps. And now with all the ramps in place, I'm going to name these top six on the properties, of course. Now I can get rid of the triangle. Actually, I can just move the triangle across to the west side. So things are hard to tick on sometimes, so I'm going to go on the senior editor and find rectangle. And now in the properties window, I'm going to give these a name following the same process I used on the east ramp, but I'm going to call these west. So when I named these the first time I got an error, I thought if I made a distinction in the display name from east to west, that I may be able to name these one, two, three, four, five. But no, I got an error, so I had to continue on up the scale starting at 13. So now I know that. I want to type in the search window and grab the rectangle again.
Now that I have the rectangle, I want to move it over here because I can add some GA spots here, starting with 18. And I just realized that I'm going to have to go back and spin these and get the arrow pointing in the correct direction. And I'll do that with the gizmo. Now to move this one in place. And I'm going to spin it around this direction. Now to name these. I left off with 17, so this one will be 18. Finish off with adding a couple of ramps here. In the scenery editor, I'm typing R-E-C-T again so I can grab the rectangle and move it over here. And I'm going to add maybe three ramps here. And let's rename them, starting with 22. We have 24 ramps, and if I wanted to add a fuel ramp over here, I could. Perhaps I will add two, one on each side. So I call this West Fuel A. I'll do a East Fuel B here. Up on the objects window under taxiway parking, I want to be sure I'm ticked on fuel and add. And rotate it into place. Move it back a little bit so we're not right on top of the fuel pump. And this will be West Fuel B. And West Fuel B in the display name and under the number B. For some reason or another, it doesn't like the A and the B, I guess because I used that for taxiways. So I'm going to pick up the number here, West Fuel 25, see if that gets rid of my errors. You can save the scenery, all the errors are gone. Now I want to add a couple helipads. And to add a helipad, it looks like the SDK has been updated where you can add a helipad start. That's wonderful. On the objects window, I'm going to drop down to helipad. And I just want a square. So I'm going to tick square. And add. And rotate it in the direction I want. And over on the properties window, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Helipad East, and I want to tick on Add Start. We can see the direction the start is facing, and if we want to change that, we can. We can play around with the degrees and get it to start the way we want it to.
and it looks like 55 degrees is relatively close. Now this will be the first time I've tried a helipad start, so hopefully it shows up on the map and works. Now there is one issue. You notice that you cannot see the helipad, and that's because the helipad is being covered up by the textures that I added. If I hit the transmute, and move the helipad over here, you can see it but it's not showing up because of the textures covered it up. But not to worry, we have it added and in place. So up on the objects menu, I'm going to swap back to scenery. And I have a package I got from FlatsimTO. It's called GBZ something helipads. I will pin that in the description below because I can't recall the name. But what I do know on the objects menu, I can tick the search and type in GBZ. And go down and find a square pad. And add. So I'm going to have to rotate it into position. And I can go over on the scale and increase the size if I want. And you will notice this is not on the ground. Over on the properties window, I'm going to untick snap to ground. And then with the green arrow here, I can lower it to the position I want. You have to make sure you're on transmute. And that looks pretty good. Maybe a little more rotation. It looks out of square with this area. I'm a bit anal when it comes to these things. Sorry. Now let's go over the west side and find a location. This looks good. And while I'm over here, I probably need to get rid of this rectangle. In the scenery editor, I'll just type in REC to find a rectangle. And there it is. And now I'm going to delete. Back on the objects window and back to helipad square and add and let's get it rotated with the gizmo and let's give it a name this will be west helipad I want to add a start we're fairly close on the angle, so I'll just change the degrees a bit. There we go. We want to go back on the objects window again and go back to scenery. Tick all and find the GBZ. And down to square pad and add. Again, rotate and size. And save the scenery. So in terms of building the airport here, I'm going to stop where I am. So what we're going to do now, though, is save the scenery and build the package. So as you know, you save the scenery on the scenery editor here at the bottom. And then we want to go over and tick on the project, on the project editor. Make sure the inspector highlights. And then you have the option down here to build the package. So let's build the package. Okay, the package is built. I'm going to X out. And I'm going to bring up the folder. 
and I'm going to bring up the community folder. And I'm going to open the scenery folder and drop down to packages. And I opened the packages folder and now it reveals the package and I'm going to highlight and copy. And I'm going to paste in the community folder. And now we'll restart the sim and see what we get. Okay, back in the simulator, I should be able to type in KNSS and pick up our airport. And here it is. And as we zoom down and look at the details, you can see the parking ramps that I added. You can see the helipads that I added and the parking ramps over here, including the fuel. So I'm just going to pick one and set for departure and fly. And now I'm going up to camera. There's no need to pause the simulator right now because the aircraft is off and it's not going anywhere. And you see we're parked in a parking ramp. You can see the helipad out there. The ground there is not completely level, so it stands up a little bit, but that's not too bad. And you can see the helipad over there. So let's turn the lights down and see how things look at night. Let's go look at the west side. See the helipad? I could have added a light here, but I didn't think of it at the time. What we have here is a good usable airport. And with the information in these tutorials, you should be able to build your own airport without any problem from scratch. And for all the people that follow me all the time, thank you for watching this. I hope you got something good from it. And for those of you that are following me for the first time, I would appreciate it if you go in and subscribe. It costs nothing to subscribe, but it does help the channel. The more subscribers I have, the more the content gets pushed out. The more the algorithm sends people to my page and sends people to my channel. So for now, I'll say goodbye. And this is Patriot6. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.